Well, good morning, Las Palmas. Uh, I guess it was inevitable this would happen. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, Rick's back in Seattle. Um, he's having trouble getting on and even his phone. So maybe something with his Wi-Fi or um, because um, I, I was talking to him, but then his, uh, he dropped, I dropped the call or he did. And I've been texting and he's not texting back. I've got a text out to Uriel. So, um, you know, my idea is um, that if Uriel can't come on and if you, maybe one of you wants to come on, I can invite you in and we can talk. Uh, but if not, uh, we are in um, Matthew 14, 1 to 12, which is Herodias. And uh, Uriel just said he'd be on. And we can just go a half hour. I could just do a, a teaching on those verses uh, without anybody next to me. So I'm, I'm certainly willing to do that. Um, let's see if Uriel's uh, going to come on now. He's driving, but uh, I'll, I'll give him the thumbs up. So we'll see. Um, and then, um, so good morning, Isabel. Um, let me, uh, let me pray before Uriel comes on, although I'll keep my eyes open. So the prayer request is, uh, Alex Gutierrez. Yeah, I knew about this. This is, um, the guy who lives with uh, Tara and Uriel and, um, he's just going through some difficulties. We'll pray for him. And here's Rick now. Okay. Uh, is that you, Rick? Yeah. So um, you can't get on, huh? I'm, I don't know. Uh, I, I've I've gone on just to explain it, and Uriel said he would come on, but he's not coming on. So, uh, but I even dropped um, your call last time. Is there something going on with the Wi-Fi at your house, maybe? Or uh... well, uh, there could be, but it's on now. But what I have is, is this is your stream preview. Now let's show your source in the stream. So then I that's on the big box that you're usually on, and then I'm on the small box underneath. But I. That's let all, me that's um, let me give you the link again um, and just type this in. Um, okay. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I just showed up twice, so that's no good. Somebody, okay. Oh, you try. You're, you're getting on as me is what you're doing. Oh, I just saw myself. Oh. So uh, let's see here. Okay, so type in, type in, in the not in Google or anything, just in the the top box there. You know the address bar. Oh, sure. Right. Okay. Uh, H T T P S colon okay. colon uh, just one colon backspace okay. backspace and then A P P dot B okay. B live one word B E L I V E. It's going to want to say believe, but put B E L I V E dot tv backsplace 16 16 15 16 16 15 backspace guest and just put backspace or backslash backslash i'm sorry back okay. same thing yes right. yes and then um uh, enter after that is guest g-u-e-s-t yes and then enter yes enter okay so, uh, hi guys, uh, this is live. Okay, there you are, connect camera. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It just okay, here, here he is. Well, I'll hang up. Let's go. Okay. okay, guys, we are. There we are. Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm so sorry, folks. I messed up my computer somehow. I couldn't get on today, and I've been frantically trying, and I've been trying to call Billy, and every time I tried to call him, <laughs> <laughs> it won't let me talk to him, so I don't, right. know, what's no, I don't know what's going on. But you're good now, and there you're, you're sort yeah. of bright, a little dark and bright. Um, <laughs> so I just started talking about prayer. Uh, oh. Alex, uh, you know the Alex Gutierrez who lives oh. with um, Taryn Uriel. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, take her away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna text you and tell him we're okay. Excuse me, one second. I know we're late, but let me do. Some I'm going to put this up. Maybe it'll, maybe I'll look a little bit brighter if I can do this. Yeah. Is that better? Um, yes. That's better. Okay. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, it's only 12 minutes late. I mean, it's yeah, late. I am very sorry. I so apologize. Thank you, Billy, for carrying the ball while I'm trying to figure out what the world I'm doing. It, it kept making, what happened was when I tried to get on, it kept making me the host instead of Billy the host so we couldn't connect. 
Right. So and yeah, I don't it, know. It was your own show or something. Was, yeah, yeah. Instead of Billy's show that I'm invited to. <laughs> That's the way we worked it out. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> and I couldn't call Billy to get the right address because every time I tried to call him, my phone would kick me and, off. Right. And I was texting you too, and I wasn't getting any. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Some some glitch someplace. But anyway, we got it all fixed. So I apologize. Yeah. So you're, you're talking about prayer with Alex, huh? Yeah, I was just going to start praying. And I said, I'd keep my eyes open because if something if something happened, I, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I never got to it. Then all of a sudden you called. And so that was it. A Alex, Alex Gutierrez is just having some personal problems. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, Alex. I, if you're watching, I hope you hopefully you are. If you're watching, we love you, man. We'll pray for you. Yeah, that's um, right now. There's a lot of a lot of things going on and it would be good if we didn't have to have those personal problems along with it, huh? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Anybody else that we should be praying for? Um, you know, Niall's mother is worse than she is. Not Niall, sorry. Deanna's mom is, oh, is yeah. worse than she is. But I think it's settled. You know, they're, they're doing better. They're all doing better there. But her, her mother is, uh, in particular, has some, you know, compromising issues. So she's yeah. she off the oxygen. That's good. I don't think they're on the oxygen anymore. No. Okay, well... Yeah. Yeah, we should pray for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Keep keep them in prayer. Um, and anybody else that wants to, us to pray for for you, or if there's anything on your heart that you'd like us to pray for, we will be glad to pray for that today. You know, we I, I, we've taken so long to get started here this morning. Maybe we should just uh, begin with prayer this morning. That's probably okay. what we should do every day, anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you want to start us off? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that, you know, Rick, was, we don't know if we knew what the problem was, we wouldn't have problems. So I want to thank you. We did pray. I know Sharon was praying. And I just thank you that uh, we're connected now mm -hmm. and uh, that there's always a way to get around these problems that you give us. And so um, as we're here, bless our time together. Uh, uh, we ask your Holy Spirit to, uh, as we get into um, Matthew 14, that uh, you'd be our teacher and our guide. Uh, I do lift up Alex and mm -hmm. uh, I just pray that he would, um, that, you know, he would be following you, Lord, and, um, and being obedient now and not, uh, you know, have no bitterness in his heart. And I do pray for your, your and Tara as they minister to him and as they give him advice like they always do. And as they speak, you, you know, your word into his life, Lord, that there would be fruit there and that they, they would see victory in, the, in, the, in the, that relationship. Um, lift up uh, Deanna and uh, her family. I thank you for the people coming around her and the people who want to help her. And um, I just pray she'd get better uh, sooner than later. And for uh, Virginia and Dwayne, um, just uh, I thank you for watching over them because um, it's a big, it's a struggle. And Deanna's always taking care of a lot of people. And her parents are, uh, they, they have needs. So, you know, thank you for the body of Christ in that situation. Um, I do thank you for um, you know, for our church and for um, how we've had an opportunity over these few months to disciple. And uh, I do pray that we would be back together soon, uh, live in a church with uh, on Sundays. Uh, so the Rick able to give messages. But in the meantime, Lord, we want to um, just uh, follow you and have you do what you would want us to do. So I pray for our body, for our congregation, for our families. Um, and I just thank you for the great God you are and how you've... Uh, in the midst of this, Lord, you continue to carry us through. So uh, bless this time. Bless Rick. Bless this conversation. I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for um, everything being perfect in you. And I I, I just uh, thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And we just uh, we know that sometimes things happen for a reason. And we know that you, Lord God, take those things, even what that Satan meant for evil, and you turn them to good. And so today, Lord God, we're so grateful even for a late start, we were really grateful that we can start and we can open your word and that your word can transform our lives. Yeah. Father, I need to be transformed by your word. And I ask that you would let that happen today. I need that every day, Lord Jesus, but I need to be transformed by your word. So I pray, yes. God, that you would let that take place in my life today as we read through your word and as we allow your word to minister to us. We do pray for these people, Lord God, who, who've asked us to pray. We pray for Alex, Lord, be with him as a uh, as a dad, as he cares for his kids, well, Lord, we pray that you would bless him, Father, give him wisdom and strength. We pray for him as a provider for them. 
and ask your Holy Spirit to be with Alex in that way. We thank you, Father, that you'll just take care of him and that you'll move in his life and that you'll give him the things that he needs, Lord Jesus, to, to not only just survive the difficult things in his life, Lord, but to be triumphant and to live an abundant life. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We thank you for giving the opportunity for us to pray for uh, Deanna and her parents again, especially her mother. We pray for her mom, Virginia, and we ask God that you would bless her, that you would minister to her, that you would bring her perfect health. We thank you, Father, for that in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, and we are so grateful that we can come to you in, in difficult times. Father, I pray that we would be the people who would be your church and be your true church and stand out, Lord God, and, and um in power and authority with Jesus Christ. I just thank you for all of those things, Lord God. And I just pray that you would help us to again, be back in, in our building soon so that we could do the things that you've called us to do and minister in the way that you've called us to minister. We just thank you for those opportunities in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. You know, uh, I was talking to, uh, one of the Nazarene pastors, you know, that uh, the, the senior pastor, his name in was Brian. Yeah, the, the one in Denver. Yeah, yeah. And the senior pastor of the church where, where we the, the funeral was held, I was talking to him Sunday afternoon and um, just sharing with him some, some of my feelings about what's going on, wondering if, if what I think is happening in the church is just happening in our church or what I feel about our church or in all churches. And and I, we were, I was talking to him about what I felt like was happening as far as churches getting to the place, I mean, just very soon getting to the place where they would, um, that they just need to be all in or they may not survive. And the only other way that they're going to survive is it really, you're going to have to do one of two things. You're either going to have to be all in as a, as a body of Christ, or you're going to have to chase a social gospel. The, and the problem with the social gospel is, is that once you chase that social gospel, um, the social gospel changes. And, it, and in our world, it changes so rapidly that nobody will know what they're supposed to be following. I mean, look, if you want to see how rapid things change on a social gospel level, look and see that tragic, horrible thing that happened to George Floyd. Look how different our world is since that moment to now. <laughs> it, it's very different, right? The, yes. the, you know, the church is different. The world is different. If you want to know how rapid things change, look and see how different things are now that COVID-19 is here. And it, look and see how we are completely different than we were just six months ago. I mean, that's not very long. It seems like an eternity because we've been living it for a long time, but, right. but it's not very long ago. Historically, six months is nothing. It's not even a blip on the screen. And so, so things change quickly. And if you, and if you, if you run after a social gospel, if you run after, you know, taking care of people's um, issues in their life, like, like liberation theology that like we've talked about on here before, if, if you run after trying to, to take care of everybody's oppressed natural need, uh, what's going to happen is that those needs change so rapidly that people are going to start saying, this is not this is no fun anymore. And it's no fun because today you're the thing that's on your heart, the thing that the thing that social injustice that you want to correct, it's going to change and it won't be the same thing tomorrow. And so you're going to have to either switch your loyalties from one social injustice to the next, which is sometimes not that easy because because you still feel pulled to the one that you're supporting. And so what happens is then you have all these different social injustices show up. It's, it's like this. Sometimes the church, the church in its history, they've wanted to help the poor and they should, that's a social injustice. Then they wanted to help people, the women who weren't having equal rights and they should, that's a social injustice. And then they wanted to help the homeless on now they want to help black lives matter. And then the see all, and if that's really your salvation, if your salvation is that you're supposed to pull away the social injustice, then the churches that begin to follow that are going to be in trouble because social injustices can change with the wind. Does, does that make sense? Sure. So what we're doing now is we're taking the other extreme of that. That's why Billy and I are doing this. We're taking the other extreme. And the other extreme is, is that we want people to be all in. 
And if you're all in, if you're all in, then our, our message is an ancient message. <laughs> our message is thousands of years old. Our message is a message of Jesus Christ and how he loves you. And I watched this morning um, a, to a testimony for, from two different uh, Islamic men who were, were just both of them in, in different places, but they're both from Iran, Persian men. I will listen to their testimony and watch their testimony this morning earlier and how, how Jesus came in and changed their life and how their life is complete. And they're both pastors, one in California, one in Colorado. And, uh, and, and how they grew up in, in Iran and how, and how they were just desperate because the, the Muhammad that they were following wasn't, wasn't working for them. And they were trying to commit suicide and everything else. And they were hopeless. And Jesus came in and gave them hope, instantly hope. And they, don't, they didn't know anything about Jesus. They just, they just heard it on a radio. And one of them, one of them, one, a cab driver gave an aunt a, a gospel track or something. And then, and then the aunt told one, one of his friends and his friends told him. And he said, okay, if, if there's really a Jesus, I mean, that's how much they knew. If there's really a Jesus, okay, here's my life. If you, if you can bring me hope, okay, I, I, what about, I don't have, you know, uh, what am I going to do? Because what I'm doing isn't working. So that ancient message of Jesus Christ and his freedom. And the, and the message of Jesus and, and his salvation and the message of Jesus and not coming to condemn you, but to set you free. The message of hope and the message of joy, the message of Jesus that we preach is thousands of years old and it hasn't changed. And we're not going to change it. We're not going to make it something different because we believe that that message is the only message that saves the world. Right. Yeah. So so. There are going to be two different kind of churches in the near future. One that's really way left and changing, changing, chasing every social injustice, and it's going to be difficult for them. And then there's going to be a church that's very, very just solid into Christ, and it's all in to Christ and all into Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, all in. And that church, that church is going to be the church that's going to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. That church is going to bring hope. That church is going to bring freedom to people and salvation and healing. And, and that church is going to see the Holy Spirit and his authority just, just blossom in the world that so desperately wants it. So that's the church that we want to be. We don't want to go back to church as usual. We want to go back to church as ancient. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go back to church as usual. I want to go back to Acts, the book of Acts. I want to walk. I want to walk, in, in, and I want Peter to walk through the the streets and, like Peter did, and, and people would fall under his shadow and get healed because the presence of Christ was with him in such an amazing and authoritative, and authoritative way. And that's why we're studying this. That's why we're we're coming to these kinds of conversations. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, Delilah's asking for prayer for Lupe, her husband. And I think I told you a little bit about this. They are. Right. And so right. I can go ahead and pray. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, all right. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do lift up Lupe. And, you know, I pray for his salvation. I pray that he, uh, the, the blind blinders would be lifted, that he would accept uh, you, uh, the true Jesus, the right Jesus. And, um, and if there's anything else going on, it could be his job. It could be relational. It could be anything, Lord. But, uh, but, Lord, we all need you. I need you today. Rick needs you today. Delilah needs you today. We all need you. And I just pray that um, um, Lupe would receive you today. So uh, we lift him up to you and, and ask that you um, would bless him and open his eyes, Lord, to see you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And the, the, sorry, I dropped something here. The, no, um, no, no problem. <coughs> it's awkward at best. Listen. Um, the, hmm. Yeah, go ahead. My back is killing me. Uh, um, that's well, hang on, hang on, hang on, to hang on. Hang on. Lord Jesus, I pray for Billy. I don't know what's going on with his back, but I pray that you would minister to him right now and that you would take care of that back in Jesus' name, that you would move in his in his body in the name of Christ and that you make him well. You take care of him, Lord Jesus, so that he can do the ministry you're calling him to do and not be distracted by physical pain, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, we pray for a healing in Billy's back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it's my it's that chronic thing. Every now and then I twist it. Anyway, the social justice churches have been around for a long time. Believe oh yeah, me, I've been in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But it, all you have to do is go back. You know, you want Acts chapter two, church, so do I. But you just have to go back to when Jesus walked the earth. There was there was kind of social injustice then. The poor, he said, you'll always have the poor with you. How about Rome? Could Rome have been any more horrible? And Jesus didn't fix that. And even if you think our government, too many taxes, Jesus said, give to Caesar what Caesar. So they wow. didn't, the Jews did not like Jesus because he wasn't, he wasn't addressing the social justice issues right. against right. the Jews. Right. So yeah, that's a way wrong way to go for the church. Not that the church shouldn't be compassionate and right. shouldn't on a person by person basis. Um, of course, we Black Lives right. Matter, of course, the poor and the homeless and all that. But our focus is, like I just prayed for Lupe, yeah. clean the inside of the cup. Right. Jesus comes, the Holy Spirit comes, and people are changed one by one. Uh, the kingdom of heaven comes, is not here in you. Right. It's right. not because we we put on a, a ribbon that says, or we, or we walk for cancer, or we right. say, just do it, or we say, just say no to drugs. These are, that doesn't do any So, so let, let me explain the difference, because there is a difference between being concerned about the poor. Let's use the poor because everybody's okay. okay with that. Yeah. Let, let's, let's, the, difference, the difference in a social justice gospel and the gospel of Christ reaching out to people is huge. Let me, let me explain the difference to you. And we'll use, we'll use liberation theology as an example, which, which the reality is, the truth is, is that Black Lives Matter, a, a lot of those kinds of conversations come from liberation theology. They do. It comes from the church. It really does. And, and, and let me just give you this. If Billy is oppressing me, for example, and he's making me poor, and he's he's got some kind of power or something over me and he's oppressing me and he's making me poor. And let's say that let's just pick a name that I can see here. Let's say that Sharon J. She would she's sweet. She'd never do that. But let's say Sharon starts feeling sorry for me. And she would feel sorry for me if Billy was oppressing me. But so she she says, Okay, Rick is being oppressed by Billy. So I'm gonna give Rick a gun. And I'm going to give him some ammunition and I'm going to teach him how to shoot it. And so Rick can kill Billy. And this is true. Rick can kill Billy because Rick's salvation is to no longer be oppressed. Right. It's freedom. It's, 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 it's taking away the oppression and that becomes your salvation. The problem with that thought is that now I've become an oppressor. <laughs> and somebody will give somebody else a gun to shoot me <laughs> and it never stops because because we're so full of sin that sin always wants to take advantage i mean it's just it's just true so that so the so salvation isn't you you're a sinner for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god and the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus yeah. christ our lord well, and that's that salvation is a salvation from your sin, sin of unbelief and acts of sin that you commit because you grew up in sin of unbelief. <laughs> uh, the, so so that's so my salvation isn't that that God is going to make my life good and God. But even though he has my life's been the most blessed life on the planet. So so it's not it's not because that's but but that's not my salvation. That's that's a that's a perk of my salvation. Right. That's frosting on the cake. My salvation is that Jesus forgave my sins. And and now I have I have life with Christ and I have an eternity with Christ. And I have an abundant life here on earth because my salvation doesn't start when I go to heaven. My salvation starts when I say yes to Jesus. Right. So the difference is is that instead of being my salvation being out from underneath an oppression my salvation is God forgave my sins, and then he'll help me to work out the details. And in fact, what the Bible says is if Billy is oppressing me, let's say that we lived in a time of slavery in the New Testament, and I was Billy's slave. The Bible says to me that I'm supposed to honor Billy the way I would honor Christ as my owner. Right. That's not, that's, that's completely opposite of liberation theology. OK, so so the difference in this is the difference in this is that you have to be all in. You you really do. You have to be all in in order to realize and understand and live out what the requirement of God is for your life once you belong to him. 
because we are we are bond servants to Christ. We have given our life to him. We belong to him. And so when and Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. That's how you know. And Jesus said that the world will know that that we love him and they will come and join us if we love each other. Yes. And the Bible even says that we're supposed to love our enemies. Now, I was I was at Ken and Chris's house. And, and, and all, by the way, all of this has to do with this 14th chapter. And I'll show you that in a second. Because this is a story about John the Baptist and what happens to John the Baptist. He gets beheaded. He's all in. Mm -hmm. that, that's the point of this conversation. When you read this story, you'll connect it. You'll connect the dots. But I would just go back to that breakfast time. Uh, I'm at Ken and Chris's house. That's the house I stayed at, Ken and Chris's, and that's important. And, and Chris has a sister. Her name is Tammy, and she has a husband. His name is Blake, and, and their son was there as well. They were, they were all there. And, and Tammy was very sweet and she made everybody breakfast. And so um, I, I was, uh, I don't even remember what day it was. I, I think it was Saturday morning. I think it was Saturday morning. And so, um, and so she made a couple of eggs and, and, and three or four strips of bacon. It was very good. It was very nice of her to make it for us. And she made it for me. And then she said, does anybody want any more? And I thought, well, you know, I probably shouldn't, but I really want to, I love bacon. So I thought, I'm going to go get a couple strips of bacon in the kitchen, right? So I walked in the kitchen and, and she was making more stuff. Well, I thought because she said, does anybody want to make more or have more? I, I thought she was making that. And she, she, it was, she was giving it to people, but she was making it for her dogs. She was making eggs and bacon for her puppies. And she makes eggs and bacon for her dogs all the time. <laughs> and, and you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that we're supposed to treat our enemies the way that we treat our pets. That's a perfect. She just gave me a perfect illustration. Right. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. She just gave me. So we're supposed to love the people that oppress us so much so that we would treat them better than we would treat our pets, which means we feed all the people and we, and then we make eggs and bacon and nice, nice, nice breakfast for our dogs. But, right? you know, the, um, so true salvation, you will be oppressed and true love is to tell people the truth. Yes. They look like their enemy. Yes. They don't waver from the truth. And you know, two plus two is four. John right. the Baptist is going to get beheaded for telling the truth. Right. I'm going to point right. out something from Leviticus. So when Jesus says, love your enemies, we think sometimes we think love is getting stepped on or agreeing with them or not offending them. No, love is the truth. Love and truth are not the same thing. Love and acceptance and tolerance are not the same thing. Right. Love and acceptance we're supposed to do. We're supposed to love, accept and forgive. That's what we're supposed to do. But we're not supposed to love and be tolerant of things that aren't aren't godly. We're not supposed to tolerate those things. We're okay. not supposed to come against people and yell and scream at them like no. sometimes we do, but we're supposed to tell the truth in love, yep. which means and tolerance and love are not the same thing, just like truth and peace are not the same thing. Right. Right? Yeah. Jesus yeah. is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. And you've said this before, when the truth, when righteousness crashes up against unrighteousness, that's just another way of saying the truth and a lie. Because right. if you're unrighteous, you're lying. Right. Um, there's going to be a thunderstorm or something. You can't just agree with unrighteousness. Right. And, and call yourself a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need, that's why I think this, that's perfectly said, Billy. I appreciate that. But that's why I think that we have to be as people of Christ, we have to be all in because we're, our world is forcing, and this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. I think the way that our world is today, it's forcing us as believers to be all in. You have to be all in, or it's going to be, it's, your Christianity, your faith in God is going to be hard. It's, it's hard enough when you're all in, but when you're not all in, it's going to be, it's going to be awful. Yeah. It's going to be awful. And you won't be able to live it. You won't be able to survive it. You That's know, what I, um, the, the, I always like to go back to being born again, because being born again is a choice. Mm -hmm. Coming to Christ is a choice. You do not have right. to make it, but you do have to make it if you do. And so you were saying people of Christ. I, the phrase that went in my head is people of color. You always hear that. I'm a, I'm a person of color. Yeah. Well, a person of color is all in. Why are they all in? Because they can't change the color. Where'd they get their color? They were born that way. Well, I'm a person of Christ because I was born again. It's the yeah. same thing. We need to be as Christ-like as people of color are color-like, where right. you can't 
get rid of it and yeah. not change from place to place and conversation to conversation. Yeah. And, and the, the, the cool thing about Christianity is that no matter what color or stripe or polka dot you are, I don't care yeah. how you do it, yeah. it, it, you're, you, you belong to Christ first. See, that's the thing about Christianity. I want people to celebrate their culture all day long. But as a Christian, Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The first thing that we are as as Christians is Christians. <laughs> the right. first thing that we are is believers in Christ. Then everything else follows. But it's all it's all every and the everything else that follows is all um, given its um, its life and its boundaries and what we celebrate. It's all given its its life by our Christianity. For right. example, there's a lot of music out there from certain cultures that is not godly. Man, I went I went to I went with Lucas the other day to play basketball. And there's some kids there out there and. And it, it doesn't matter what color the kids were that were playing basketball. Some were white, some were black, doesn't matter. But they were playing music that was rap. And it was so disgusting and, and so demeaning to women. And the things that it was saying was were pornographic. Really, they were. And it was like these kids didn't even realize it. And it's like, wait a minute. If you're a Christian first, that should tell you that this is not okay. Right. You know, just because it's okay for a culture to buy into that. My culture as a believer is Christianity. My culture is Christ mm -hmm. first. And then everything else that I do and live is dictated by that first culture, which right. is Christ. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that said okay, Billy? Did, did I? No, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, you put, I mean, you suddenly are clothed. With, you know, I'll give you the biblical thing, you know, we're clothed in Christ. You put yeah. on Jesus every morning. So when you're clothed in Christ, you're going to look like Christ and you're going to talk and walk like Christ. And, I remember there was a thing called chicken soup for the soul, and they had yeah. chicken soup yeah. for the mother's soul, for the father's soul, for the uh, ball player's soul, for the and they, they had all these cottage ones. It's like it's either chicken soup or it's not. What do you care? <laughs> drinking it, and it's the same thing about the Bible. We don't care what color you are. Stop identifying yourself as rich, poor, fat, thin, man, woman, black, white. You know, athletic. Stop it. You're a Christian. That's all you are. We're equal at the cross, yeah. and God will yeah. work out the details in everybody's life. Yeah, and and everybody once you be that's absolutely true. Once you once you are in Christ, and the first thing that you are is in Christ. That's it. And, and you're not in a religious spirit. What's a religious spirit? A religious spirit is when it when a church or other people put rules and orders on you that aren't in Scripture, that aren't a part of what Christ says. That's a religious spirit. And there's a lot of religious spirits out there. So you're a, you're a Christian first, and then you know how to discern what's going on in life, right from wrong. And you know if things are a religious spirit because the church can be just as toxic as a rap song. Right. I mean, really, or yeah. a rap, I guess it's not a song, but a rap. But so, so a Christian, so, so there are all kinds of ways that Satan wants to tie you up. So what you need to know is the truth so that you don't allow that to happen in your life. And the Holy Spirit, you, you don't have to be all-knowing. The Holy Spirit, if you're following Christ, will say to you, in and you know it, hey, you know, this isn't okay. This is not okay for you. And, and, and you'll get a conviction in your heart, but there's sometimes when the Holy Spirit says it is okay to you and it will lead you to the loss of your life on this earth. And that's where we find ourselves in the scripture. But yeah, you were going to say something, Billy. I was just going to say that Christ said, when you're free, you're free indeed. Christ came mm -hmm. to set us free from religion and from our sin and all that. The story I always tell when I was a kid, you know, our table was set, the, the fork was on the left. And I asked my mom why, and she had, didn't have an answer. God <laughs> has answers. But I mean, I, everyone's right-handed. My fork's in, why am I putting it on the left? Well, later I figured out because I wasn't allowed to have a knife. Yeah, the right. knife is in the, yeah, that's why. And there's oh. a reason to it. And God doesn't have rules that make no sense that just because so-and-so said so. And that's right. what religion is. Religion are rules to control you. God doesn't want to control you. He wants you to die and be free to live your life abundantly. That's the huge difference in religion. The, the only kind of, absolutely, the only kind of control, and this keeps leading to little other veins of conversation, which is really important. The only kind of control that, that God wants for you is self-control. Right. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. yeah, that's Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What is self-control? Let me tell you what that is. It's really important because what self-control is, excuse me, is when the Holy Spirit within you 
liberates you. It's a liberation, frees you, breaks the chains of those things that bind you. So the Holy Spirit liberates you, takes off the handcuffs, you know, breaks the chains that you're all chained up with, breaks the chains so that you can choose right over wrong. That's self-control. Because if you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit to come and liberate you, then you, you won't be able to choose, right? Even though you're responsible, but you won't be able to. Because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that you're a slave to sin or you're a slave to Christ. Slave means that I don't have any power within me to stop. It's like I'm addicted to whatever. And I want to stop, but I can't. When Jesus comes in and breaks the chains, when Jesus comes in and liberates you, part of his spirit in you is self-control so that you can break those. But it's not even you breaking the chains. No. It's the Holy Spirit's breaking the chains so that you can break the cycle, <laughs> so that you can choose the right over the wrong. And then and in, in Hebrews 5, 11, in, the, in a few verses there, he says that those, you should be teaching the ABCs. You're not very mature, he's saying. You're right. back in elementary yeah. school. But he says, by this time, you should be teaching. And he says, and, and you would know if you're righteous or know if you're mature, if you can discern right from wrong. And it's an implication of not just discerning it, but doing it. So that's the point that, that, that you come to in your life. And again, all of that is illustrated by this conversation about, about John the Baptist's life. John the Baptist comes to the place where he's in trouble. He's put in jail because somebody doesn't like who he is. And we'll read the story. I'll, I'll, we'll read it so you don't have to listen to me tell it to you. But he's not going to relent. He's not going to say something different to save his life. He's going to say, this is the truth. This is, the, this is what God did. This is what happened. And so be it, whatever it is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be what God called me to be. And all the other stuff doesn't matter. And that's really, he gave his life for this. He, 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 his, he was beheaded for this. And then, to so, show even greater disrespect, they brought his head in on a platter mm -hmm. to show somebody. Well, she I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we'll read through it. it, it you, you'll see it. But anyway, uh, so all this conversation isn't really just about conversation. All this conversation to me is a setup to show and, and to use this wonderful man, John the Baptist. I can't wait to see him in heaven. I can't wait to, 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 to man, to, you know, not to worship him, but man, to, to give him such great respect. Somebody that would do this is amazing. God chose his cousin, Jesus chose his cousin on the on earth, the, John the Baptist, to do an amazing thing, to, to cry out in the wilderness and to say, here comes the Lamb of God. You yeah. know, he's going to save the sin, save, save you from your sins, you know, repent. You know, he had a message of repentance before Jesus came, and then they had to change their repentance to Christ. It, it, th this man was, I can't wait to see him when I get to heaven and, 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 and just, you know, just, I don't know what I was going to do, but I just, I would I want to meet him. <laughs> I, I, I want to meet him. Give him a hug. Yeah, give him a big bear hug. Give him a Rick hug. You know that kind of thing. I do because how many of us, honestly, how many of us are so all in in our life? I mean, really think about this. How many of us are so all in that if somebody said we're going to take your life, and you say, "Go ahead." Well, those are martyrs. We, I mean, we've had martyrs. I, I think we it's have. harder to have um, a predicate adjective after your name. John right. the Baptist, mine would be Billy the Sarcastic. I mean, who can carry around that name? If can't? <laughs> Billy the Rick the something, Billy the something. So he's John the Baptist. Good for you, John. Nice, nice yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, he's really John, son of uh, Bar Zachariah. Yeah, Bar Zachariah. Yeah, yeah. Son of, the Bar is the son of, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want to you want to read through this a little okay. bit? I'll read all twelve verses because it's yeah funny. right okay. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus, and said to his servants, "This is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead, and therefore these powers are at work in him." For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had said to him, "It's not lawful for you to have her." And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. 
Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, give me John the Baptist's head on a platter, here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sat and had John beheaded in prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother, lovely. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Yeah. And verse 13 to 14, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. I mean, Jesus, when Jesus heard this, it was his cousin. And, and um, they had been acquainted even before their births when they were in the womb. Uh, there was a there was a connection, and you know, go back and read that story about Elizabeth and Mary. So, so Jesus, I'm sure Jesus loved John the Baptist, and man, it bothered him so much when he heard what had happened to him that he he needed he needed a moment, he needed to get away, mm -hmm. and he he had compassion on the people that followed him after that, which is which is incredible. But this story is this story is it's a story. And you could read through the story and you could parse it out. There's a couple of pieces in here that if you if you started looking at it, you get, you have to look at them pretty well to understand what they really mean. Um, in the very beginning, you know, but the whole but I want you to get the picture of the whole story, right? What's the whole story? Here's here's this young girl who dances before the king and her mother doesn't like John the Baptist. And why doesn't her mother like John the Baptist? Because she was committing incest. She the, yeah. we, we should probably yeah. figure out our Herods. Yeah. Uh, Herod the Great is the yeah. famous one. He's the mm -hmm. one that put all the babies to death under two when Jesus was born. Well, right. he died, and that's why uh, Mary and Joseph came back from Egypt and then settled in Galilee. But yeah, right. That, that's that Herod. When he right. died, he was he was the great Herod. He's the Herod who maybe gets a little bit of respect, built the temple. He had right. four sons who were idiots. One was worse than the other. This <laughs> guy, Herod Antipas, right. is not the worst. He might be the dumbest. And what he does... He marries his one of his brothers. Well, the worst one, Rome got rid of the worst. In fact, right, the right. worst one was in charge of Jerusalem, Judea. He, they gave him all the big area. They gave this guy Galilee. Nobody lives in Galilee. It's Nazareth. He, you know, it's like giving you uh, Desert Hot Springs. I mean, they yeah. gave him, he was he was a nobody. But this Herod Antipas, his other brother was Philip. He was right. married to Herodias, and he took Herodias as his wife. Right. Not, yeah. And so they're married, and Salome is her daughter from Philip. Right. And John the Baptist simply says... From Leviticus, so, this is such a this is a Bill Clinton kind of sin. He's saying is, a very public this, sin. You're marrying your brother's wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. So, so John John the Baptist calls him out. It's a political thing. He's a political figure, although it's religious because you know they're Jews and he, he he's he's the head well, and and he calls him out. And so, I mean, that's John the Baptist's message was was repent. So John yeah. the Baptist was was all about the right thing to do. Yes. And when he was questioned about this, John was not going to l l l relent on his on his honesty, and he said, "You this what you're doing is not okay." I'm and not so, sure his question. He might have actually just offered it and said, "Yeah, well, yeah. whatever." However, yeah. the conversation came about. Yeah. He 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 says, "What's happening here is not right." You need to repent from this act of, of unrighteousness. And so mom gets daughter to to dance, you know, because she's right. dancing. Mom gets daughter to say what I want because she knows the king is going to be pleased. She says, or the hair is going to be pleased. She says, she says, look, this is what I want. Because when he asks what do you want, you know, you're going to say. And she knows it's a public what do you want. It's at the it's at the time of dancing. She knows it's a public conversation, so there's all these people around. So now he's his, his pride kicks in, and his pride is because he it, you know if they were by themselves, oh, he yeah. might have said you know this is that's, that's he doesn't he doesn't want to kill John the Baptist. Yeah, he doesn't he puts him in prison right. because it's a political nightmare. They all think he's a prophet, right? He, and but this Antipas guy, why well, I called him an idiot? He's dupl he's a today we call him a flip flopper. Yeah, he's, yeah. So he's known for changing his mind. And he's right. saying, I can't change my mind now. And yeah. so, so he does it. And right. um, and that's how John the Baptist gets killed. It's it's a series of bad, unfortunate events. Yeah. And, except, except it's a series of things that God put into place, I believe. Sure, sure, sure. So, so God, this is God's, again, even if Satan meant this for evil, God's going to turn this to good. 
Okay. And and it's a, it's it's not just an illustration because it caused somebody their life. It's way more than just an illustration. But the fact is, is that it's a lot like what we're going through today. The message is the same. The message is, do you fold to the conversations and the pressure of a society that wants to go against God? Or do you stand up no matter what happens and say, Bring it on. So be it. Uh, you know, I'm following God. I'm going to do what God says. And what God says to tell the truth, you should tell the truth. And what God says, it's it, God says, and, 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 and you know, it's going to cause you some stuff, maybe loss of your life. What do you, what, cho what choice will you make? What choice will I make? Where, where will we really land in this whole conversation about what's going on in our world today? Where are we yeah, going to land? Guess, um, in our culture, it's don't ask, don't tell. They used to say that. I have a hard time thinking Herod oh. would ask John the Baptist. Like, I have a hard time people asking me, Billy, what do you think? People don't want to ask me a question because yeah. I'm going to tell them the truth. So why would you ask John the Baptist, well, hey, is this marriage okay with you? Um, John the well, Baptist, I think, was probably vocal and said, that's wrong. And he said, "Who put him in jail. You can't talk that way to me. Well, um, I'm sure some. I, I'm sure they had a conversation. Somebody had a conversation with him about this. Maybe about went him. to Herod. Maybe yeah, they went yeah, to Herod yeah. and said, hey, "John's talking about you." But yeah. I think another warning in here for us is oaths. Why would yeah. you take oaths? Because he said it's not. It's in Mark. It's not here. He said you can have right. anything up to half my kingdom. And she right. said, "Half your kingdom. I want John the Baptist." She looked at her mother. And said, "Let me get that." Yeah. Um, it reminds <laughs> me of in the Old Testament when there was a, an, a guy and I can't remember his name. He's Hebrew. <laughs> and he said to God, if you do this for me, I will, I will sacrifice the next person who comes out of my house. And it was his daughter. Right. And, he, right. and, he, and he held to that. So don't start conversation with God like if you just love the Lord, trust him, have faith, serve him, let the Holy Spirit work through you. But don't make deals with God like, God, I'll always love. I'll come to this church forever. And if stop that, you don't you, you don't know tomorrow. You can't add a, a day to your life or an inch to your height. Well, well, the Bible is very clear. It's very plain. The Bible says that you let your yes be yes and your no, yes. no. Yes. When you when you make an oath, you should just make that oath and that's it. Now, all of us have broken oaths, and but we should ask for forgiveness of that because God says that's not OK. We read we read that is a sinful thing is to break your oath. That is a part of this conversation. Well, I mean, Again, uh, Herod did something he didn't want to do. Right. To save his face. To save but that, that's a pride thing, I think, for Herod at this point. Right. Because yeah. he's in yeah. front of all these people that mentioned yeah. it here that he's in front of all these guests and his pride's go, well, OK, you know, because right. if because he's going to look weak as a leader, if he doesn't, if, he, if at that point, even though it's a, a horrible thing that he's going to do, he's going to look weak. He's going to look like a, he, people look, people don't already. He's, he's not respected anyway. No. <laughs> You know, so but but he so he's probably feeling bad that he's not respected. He can't do another thing that he knows going right. to going to bring disrespect on himself. And so th there's just a whole host of things that happen within him interpersonally that happen with him for him to to get to the place where he just says, OK, go, you know, bring the head of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. But I think this whole conversation, though, is about the courage and the truthfulness and the honesty and uh and, and it's a, you know, it's, 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 it's awful. It's awful. Really. It's, I mean, it's horrible. It's, it's not full of awe. I don't mean that kind of awful. I mean, it's bad. It, it's, it's, it's an awful thing that, that somebody has to lose their life as it, so that we can use it, that God puts it in his word so that we can use it as an illustration for how things might get for us. Well, one of the things I didn't, you know, because I'm bad with family relationships, I don't understand them, but it's not just his brother Philip's wife. Mm -hmm. She's the daughter of his uncle. He's right. with this person. So his uncle has a kid named Herodias. Right. And Philip marries his cousin. I don't know who that is. It's and a family member. It's only a family member. Yeah. So it's, it's what you were talking about, how you're at a basketball game, and the music, you're coming up against that music, and you're right. the one who's going to get beheaded. Or you right. come up against the filth of the world. We're the ones who are going to be beheaded because the culture is run by the evil one. He's the prince of the power of the air. And so we should not be surprised when we live in a world and say, why is it getting so bad? <clears throat> or how come they don't like me? <clears throat> you, you, you as salt and light should be there. You know, there's not a lot of contrast on Rick's face right now because he's faced. If he faced the sun, if he turned this whole thing around, <laughs> you'd see Rick, you'd see everything on Rick. Yeah. We should look so bright as the sun because we're in such a dark world. We're walking in darkness. And John the Baptist walks into a place where 
a guy marries his, I, I can't get the relationship, but it's his uncle's daughter and it's his brother's wife and he yeah. takes her away. And, and you know, Herod, you got more problems than whether your pride is at stake. Right. You're sleeping with your cousin or, or somebody. So it's well, pretty- yeah. And, and really all that sets up is how bad the world is. And I mean, John's just telling the truth. John's yeah. not, he's telling the truth. Yeah, that's the point. The point is this pretty it's a pretty ugly situation. It's and every everybody knows it's not okay. Yeah. I mean I mean it's not like it's not like people think it's okay. Everybody nobody thinks it's the right thing to do except the people who are really twisted in the way they think and think, well, you know, he's he's a leader, he can do whatever he wants, you know, that kind of stuff. But 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 don't we have in our world today don't we have a whole lot of twisted thinking? That, haven't you said about our world today, things seem so upside down? Haven't you had that conversation? With well, yeah, here, here, I did, here in California, yeah. with the COVID, and they're locking down churches and everything, they've got time to vote on a bill that would allow eight-year-olds in public schools to take hormone therapy to put off mm-hmm. puberty so they could decide if they want to be a boy or a girl. Right, I know. And now I you know. think something against that? I know. Cut my head off. But you know that yeah, yeah, the world is incredibly, incredibly perverted. Well, and and that, left, right, and up, down, and this right and that wrong. Yeah. yeah it's upside down. It's We're calling we, a boy a girl. Yeah, right. No, it's true. I, I, it, that's what. That's just one little conversation about how bad things really are, or how you know. Excuse, I'm sorry. Well, let me say it this: how messed up things really are. They just really messed up. Yeah. And we live in this world, and this world throws a bunch of dirt on us all the time. They, they as my kid would say, throw shade on you. Used to. I don't know if that's what they say anymore, but close, you know. Yeah. So, so the bottom line is, is, is the 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 world is polluting us all the time. And John the Baptist has said, no, you're not going to pollute me. Even if I have to lose my life, you're not polluting me. I'm not going to agree with this. However that conversation came about, I don't care. Yeah. The conversation yeah. did come about, and it did happen, and he lost his life for it. And so the reality is, is that, is that that's, this is for us. A, a paradigm. This is for us a model of the way that we're supposed to live within the world that we face today. Sometimes it's coming against the church. Why did I start talking about the church in the beginning of this? Because there are going to be lots of people who call themselves the church, and and they may be Christians. I don't know. It's not my my, my place to say. But I'm not supposed to run after every social injustice on the planet. Right. I'm so, Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't illustrate that for me. There's there's a few social injustices he sp- he wants us to talk about, and some of them not in the way we're talking about them today. He, he says homosexuality is wrong. I'm 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 sorry. I you you can be mad at me. I'm just telling you that's what the Bible says. So we right. so what are we going to do with that? I, you know you know. <laughs> We could start talking about all that stuff and make everybody mad at the end. I don't know if we want to do that, but but the point is, is that is that God says to us, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God." He told, he he John the Baptist is what everybody thought he was an idiot. They thought he was a lunatic. They thought he's you know this guy's nuts. But what he did was he lived a life so peculiar that people thought he was crazy. But the reality is, is he was very honest about what God's truth. They was. came out. Even the Pharisees came out to see him. This Herod right. guy, yeah. he, he's such, he's a tetrarch, but he, he made people call him King. He's not a King, but they made him yeah. call him King Herod. And so, but so to approach a guy who calls himself King and makes you do that. Yeah. You're getting your head cut off and we're going to get metaphorically our heads cut off when we preach Christ. Or, so, or you may, you may honestly, you may lose your head. Well, that's, I mean, that's, somebody that's, might that's shoot you. Times. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay. Somebody might shoot you. Somebody might. I mean, it may not be metaphorical. It may not be a meta. It, it may be a, a reality for some of us. And you know what? I'm not. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I'm not. I'm not saying thus saith the Lord that because I don't. God didn't tell me that. I'm just saying that could happen. People look. We've seen on the news where people just hold up a sign that that's that's supporting our president, and somebody shoots them. I mean, for goodness sakes, we live in a very, very upside down society today. Look, you got to be all in. <laughs> you know, uh, Delilah just put up a thing. We're supposed to pray for everyone. And I'm not sure what she yeah. means by that. But, John, there's, we do pray for everyone. And then when we're uh, confronted, we tell them the truth. 
Yes. We yeah. don't just pray for people. We stand for Christ. And when you stand for Christ, you stand against the darkness. And if the right. darkness is anything we're mentioning now, doesn't there's no good people or bad people. There's only in Christ or out of Christ. That's So we want everyone to come to Christ. We don't care about their sins. We don't care about their political beliefs, the, right. the bent of anything, the color of skin. But God gave us minds and mouths, and we, and we need to tell them why they put the fork on the left side. We right. have a reason for everything. The Bible gives us a reason. John the Baptist... I won't take you there. Levitic, Leviticus 18. He didn't just say, I don't like you marrying your whoever that the incest. He could say in Leviticus 18 he says you can't do that. Right. And now Herod has to fight God, not John the Baptist. So right. of course we pray for everybody, but we're not the silent majority. We have right. to be vocal in God's words. Yeah, not well, that's what I think that I think I think you said it in a completely different way, but perfectly. We're not the silent majority. God didn't look, speak up when God tells you to speak up and be quiet when he tells you to be quiet. Just and, pray always, and pray always for sure. And, and love, always, enemies, right. love everybody, yeah, but don't yeah. approve of everybody. Don't tolerate and approve of them. Right. I would have but, to tell kids in class all the time. Yeah, I love but, you, but I don't approve right. of that behavior. Right. And the, and the point okay. is, is that because we live in such a dangerous world today that you don't, Jesus said, look, they persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. <laughs> don't, don't think that just because you're nice and kind and most, and I, I'm sure all of you are, you're nice and you're kind. Kinder than you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, yeah. Yeah. And you're loving and, and, and you try not to make anybody mad and you try to be tolerant with people. Look, tolerance isn't going to work anymore in our society. Never it, did. It's, it didn't anyway, but it, but it's going to be worse now. Yes. Because look, when they make, when they, when I see a person on the street saying, you're, you're a person that's not of color, so you need to bow down before me. <laughs> Look, I'm not bowing before anybody but Jesus. And you no. will tell that person the truth and pray for them both. Yeah. And if they pull out a gun and shoot you for telling the truth, well, I guess that's the way it goes. Right. And, you know, and, I, and I mean that. I'm not, I'm not trying to be flip about it, but you never know who people are anymore. So we so some people are going to feel safe by chasing all of those social issues and standing up for them because you'll have a lot of voices with you. Some people are going to be safe by saying no way, I'm not doing I'm only going to say what God wants me to say. Some people are going to feel safe by being silent and not saying anything. The reality is is that God called you to be a Christian first. He called you to live the life of Christ. He told you that you would be persecuted, just like he was persecuted. He told you that it wasn't going to be easy. But he also said, if you're all in, your life will be an abundant life. Abundant life. You'll live your life to its fullest degree. And you can't be the light unless you walk into the darkness. You can't just stay at church with all the light. You've got to yeah. walk among the darkness. And you can't be salt. I can't think of the metaphor there, but you can't be salt unless you throw it somewhere, you know. Well, well you, you, well, you got to show up to be salt. You can't, you can't be salt far away because nobody you, will know what you're doing. Yeah, you yeah. got to be able to broadcast it or speak, yeah. speak it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be pray, present. Oh, pray without ceasing for sure, Delilah. Pray for yeah. and love everybody. But yeah. well, but I don't we, know what Delilah means, and I'm not. I don't either. To I don't either. But it came at a point where maybe we were yeah. sounding. Uh, well, I, well, I don't know. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to do that. I I, 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 you know, Delilah, we will pray for you. The, the 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 right response to your your conversation is pray for. I don't know. I I can't see all of it. I just say pray for my, and that's all I can see. No, uh, Lower says we are supposed to pray for everyone. Yeah, we are, and and we will absolutely. I, I, you're absolutely right. And this isn't about what you said. This is about this illustration. This the life of John the Baptist illustrating for us how we need to live our life for Christ in a very difficult upside down world. We've and, gone a little over. Well, you know, we didn't start till late, so I didn't feel okay, bad. Okay with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I saw that we were over, but I thought, ah, oh, well, you know, it's my fault. I didn't start late. I'm going to, hopefully everybody will be nice and not mad at me for that. But anyway, look, we, we have enough problems. We have enough problems with, with what's coming against us with, with Satan in the world. You know, we don't have, we shouldn't be, coming against one another, you know, and, and I don't think we are. I just think, you know, I think we really need more than any, any time in the future, in any time, I think for my, in my lifetime, this is, we have to be unified more than we ever have been as, as the body of Christ. 
as as a true believer in Jesus. We have to be more unified now because we're going to need each other in the world that we face like we've never needed each other before. And I, I really believe that in, in my lifetime anyway. I really believe that. Say, so, hey, listen, this has been a fun conversation for me today. It's fun because it's always fun to see the truth. It's always fun to see somebody who has an immense amount of courage show us how they're supposed to live their life in the in the midst of a very ugly nasty world and john the baptist does that for us and so i'm hoping and i'm praying that when if things ever come my way that i have the same kind of courage through the holy spirit because it's not courage it's not my own courage it's god's yeah. in me i i'm hoping that i walk close enough for the lord that his courage will be in me and that I will do exactly what he wants me to do, whether it's stay here on this earth and continue to be a voice or whether it's to have somebody take me out <laughs> and I go live with Jesus, you know, whatever one. To, uh, uh, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Isn't that what Paul says? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. But yeah, I was getting there. Good job. Okay. All right, man. God bless you. We love you. You are his favorite. And I hope that you'll kind of run this through your your thought process today and pray about it and see what God wants you to do there. This is what's on my heart. I think there are some people out there and then we'll go. I think there's some people out there that, that maybe have been um, wondering if they're supposed to share a word with someone or if they're supposed to speak the truth into someone's life. You know, I'm not telling you to go do that because only you and God know if you should, but what I'm telling you to do is don't dismiss that thought. If it's in your mind, if you feel like God wants you to go somewhere, I'm, what I'm telling you to do is take some time, take some time with Jesus and find out what he wants you to do. And it, it might be silent, but it might be share the truth and love. And yep. maybe it's the time for that to happen because I think there's going to be a great revival coming our way. I believe that's what's going to come out of all this is a great revival coming our way. Listen, you're God's favorite. So are you, Billy. God bless you. And I'm glad I am too. We'll mm -hmm. see you tomorrow. Bye. Sure.